the purpose of this course is to teach you some basic HTML and CSS. HTML and CSS are computer languages that allow us to create websites on the web. And I want to go over some basic internet terms so that you can kind of understand the, the whole world of the web and why it is that we do things that we do. First of all, we have a website, which is a series of files such as website, what such as web pages, uh, such as images, uh, movies. Uh, audio, so on, that exist on a server written in languages a web browser can understand, such as HTML and CSS. The home page, by default, is a file that is called index.html and can be called, can be reached by calling its internet protocol or IP address which can be a numerical address like 000.000.000.000 um, that specifies a specific location on a specific piece of server hardware somewhere in the world. It can also be, and we don't generally work using uh, the numerical addresses, what we usually use is something called a domain name, which is a, a human readable name like HTTP, HTTP uh, colon slash slash www.web.com, um, amazon.com, um, ups.com, so on. Files other than the home page must be accessed by using that page's URL, um, such as www.web.com slash folder name slash file name dot HTML. Moving from page to page on a website, well, and usually you don't even know what those uniform resource locators URLs are um, because we use buttons on web pages to move us from page to page. But if you look at the top of the web browser, if you look up here, you'll see that, for instance, this particular file exists at, w, uh, at deannettles.com slash web examples. So that web examples is a folder. And then there's another folder inside that called basic internet terms. And then inside of basic internet terms, there's a file called index.html. And that's where this particular file right now is living. Um, okay. And moving from page to page on a website, um, you could go by this series of URLs, but we find it much easier to go from page to page by um, having navigation buttons, hyperlinks, and things like that to take you from page to page. But each of these pieces of navigation buttons, hyperlinks, um, are all coded to have these particular URLs attached to them. And then we click on them and then the website takes you to the next page. Okay. We have the term developer is somebody who writes code for web pages. You will be a web developer and probably at the end of this particular well, at the end of the class, but probably at the end of this lesson this week. You web developers write code for web pages using languages such as HTML, CSS, PHP, and JavaScript. Now, the information, so the developer works on their computer, and then they use something called a modem to transmit the information from their computer 
out of their computer and to the website. Um, modems come in a lot of different varieties. There's DSL, there's cable, there's fiber optic. When you um, get your connection to the internet, um, you get a modem that allows you to convert data for transmission over the phone or other communication lines, because in fact, uh, data has to move over um, the airwaves and, um, and phone lines and so on in a different format than it is coded here on your computer. Okay, there's something called F, uh, FTP, which you'll hear a lot about as we move along, file transfer protocol, which is a program that allows you to send information to a website or uh, download information from a website. Basically, we have a series of files here on the developer's computer and those files need to be transferred to the website and sometimes downloaded back. And so FTP allows us to transfer those files quickly and easily. Uh, hang on a second. Okay. Sure. Server. So, you're wondering where this website exists. This website exists on something called a server, which is a computer that stores files and sends files, file contents on request. Basically, it's a computerized filing cabinet. Servers are often optimized for specific uses. You can have web servers, which are designed to hold websites. You can have uh, what are called domain name servers, which keep track of what website is on which computer somewhere in the world. You can have email servers, video servers, audio servers, a lot of different types of servers exist. Uh, most of the time you'll just be uh, in this course, you'll just be dealing with a standard server. We also have something called a web host which is an organization that rents websites um, to people. So for instance, GoDaddy would be a web host. What they do is they own a bunch of servers and they uh, rent out space to anybody who wants to build a website and they do that for a fee. And they also um, maintain your website. They maintain the computers, they maintain security and so on. And so you're paying for all those things when you um, hire a web host to host your, your website. It's also possible for you to have your very own server at home and then uh, do whatever you want on that server and, and host it to the internet. Uh, it's just a bit more complicated process. Okay, so now how does that web page, this web page that we've coded, reach the world? So the internet, this thing that you've heard of for years and years, is a worldwide system of thousands of public servers, in other words, hardware, with high-speed interconnections. Um, initially, when the internet was connected, it was a series of public servers at universities, and but now there are commercial servers, there are university servers, there's government servers, and um, they're all connected to each other everywhere. Okay, we also have something called the World Wide Web, which is a term that's used interchangeably with the internet. But in fact, the World Wide Web is a standard file system. In other words, uh, software and language used on the internet that allows users to move from one document to another using hyperlinks. Okay, um, so hyperlinks 
Hopefully you're familiar with hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are those little uh, lines in a document that might be, say, an email address that's blue. And then if you click on it, it'll open up that email address. Um, basically, the World Wide Web allows your uh, uni allows uniform resource locators to be used as a way to move from page to page in a website or between websites. And we have hyperlinks, which is highlighted text on a web page that, when activated, displays the linked web page that um, is listed to the user by calling its URL. We have the user, which is the person um, who, at their computer, is sending a request to see a particular web page. We have the service provider, which provides the connection, the DSL cable fiber optic to the internet. So generally, your service provider will also provide your modem. Um, so, for instance, if you you know if you get your web uh, service from Verizon, then Verizon will provide you with the modem. Um, and they provide the cabling and or um, wireless connection that allows you to use the internet. Again, we have the modem because in fact, the information goes out, has to be encoded to go out. And then once it's on the website, it has to be recoded when it comes back in. And we have the web browser, Firefox, IE, Safari, um, Chrome, which is the program that interprets the code created by the developer uh, from interprets the code and creates a website, the visual representation of that code on your computer. So that's an overview. Again, developer writes code for the website. They send it to the website, which exists as a folder on a server somewhere in the world. And in fact, it could be that you have uh, several servers that all duplicate each other so that there's also a full backup in case something goes wrong. But anyway, Website is a series of files on a folder, on a server, somewhere in the world. You code it, you send it up to your website. Then somebody decides that they want to access your website by uh, using, and you know, they go to Google, and Google has a list of all the websites. And so you find one that's sort of like what it is that you're looking for. You then put in a request and your computer sends out a signal through the modem to the correct server using the uniform resource locator. It pings the file here on the server. That information then gets sent back through the service provider, through the modem, to your web browser. Your web browser then reads this code and gives you a visual interpretation of it. That is your web page. So sounds a little complicated, um, but you find that as we work through it, it's it um, it's a very complicated process with a very simple result.